Morning, the U.S. is the new epicenter for the coronavirus. So the nation now has more confirmed cases than anywhere else in the entire world, even China. Here's a look at the latest numbers. There are about 86,000 cases within the United States. Nearly 1,300 people have died of COVID-19. According to the Florida Department of Health, there are 2,484 cases in the Sunshine State. And in Florida, there have been 29 deaths. And the impact of the pandemic is massive, touching everyone's life, no matter your age. This morning, we are taking a closer look at how COVID-19 is impacting education and the way our children are learning. Eight on your side's Deanne Roberts is live for us at Northwest Elementary School. And Deanne, you spoke to Hillsborough County's new superintendent about the impact on education. What more do you have for us? Hey, good morning. So obviously that impact is absolutely massive. Obviously the school district is out millions of dollars due to their response to COVID-19, not to mention teachers and students are now having to learn from inside their homes. And all those, these signs say that school is going to open on April 15th, we all know that can change at a drop of a dime. Hillsborough County's new superintendent, Addison Davis, tells me the district is pulling out all the stops. This week, more than 15,000 laptops were given to students for their new way of virtually learning. The district has ordered 30,000 more, and that's just in case. All week, teachers have been training and setting up lessons for their students. That e-learning program is set to launch Monday, March 30th. The district has also been delivering breakfast and lunch to students in need. So far, more than 60,000 meals have been delivered through their 23 meal distribution sites. But by Monday, there will be nearly 150 sites. Any student under the age of 18 can get free meals. Right now, we're working, uh, looking at uh, an overall free and reduced lunch heat map to show us where there may be pockets of needs. And then we're trying to build thoughtful plans to be able to use uh, transportation to go into those areas to be able to serve and address those immediate needs as of now. I talked to Superintendent Davis also about retention rates, about the status of seniors, and about Farnell Middle School. Many of you may remember Farnell had to shut down due to a person testing positive for COVID-19. I'll have an update on that coming up at um, 5.30. I'm live in Tampa. Deanne Roberts, 8 on your side. All right, thanks, Deanne. This morning, a new drive through testing site is opening, this one in Sarasota. It's set up at Twin Lakes Park and will test patients who meet the guidelines from 8 o'clock until noon. Now to go, you do need to call and make an appointment. The number is right there on your screen. It's 941-861-2883. You will also need to show a photo ID and a prescription from your health care provider. And Tampa's newest COVID-19 testing site at Raymond James Stadium will close today. It opened Wednesday, and by the time it shut down, officials say they will have tested around 900 people. Eagle 8 HD flew over the site when it first opened as Carl's cars rolled through the site nonstop. Officials explain a lack of kits is now forcing them to close the site. Time is now 435 on this Friday, and Pinellas County wants to make sure businesses understand and abide by the safer at home order that is in effect. Sheriff Bob Galtieri is along with county and city officials here, and they posted 14,000 notices on businesses' doors. They warned shops if they don't enforce CDC social distancing guidelines, they could in fact be shut down. Now, the order is slated to last for at least one week, but it could be extended. And this morning, an 8 on your side warning about fishy-looking coronavirus stimulus checks. Like it says, uh, time-sensitive, fast-tracked, open immediately, do not bend, stuff like that. Andrew Thomas of Brooksville is describing an official-looking check he received in the mail. He says it was made out for more than $3,000 and claimed to be a COVID-19 stimulus check. Well, he immediately knew it could not be true and posted a warning on social media. I wanted to post that as soon as I could because I know that some people, especially like people like my grandma, would have fallen for stuff like that. Along with the check is a letter telling people to claim their stimulus incentives at an address in Bushnell. Aid on your side contacted a number affiliated with that address and a voice recording said it was a carport and truck rental service. And another red flag about the letter, of course, the stimulus package is not a done deal yet. The House of Representatives still has to vote on it. 
which is expected to happen today. Now, when it's approved, you will not get your stimulus money for at least three weeks, and for most people, the money will be a direct deposit. So supplies of those much-needed items like toilet paper, hand sanitizer, and also disinfectant wipes could soon be back on store shelves. Walmart, Target, and Publix, they all tell us that they are working overtime to restock those items that I just mentioned. And they're also hiring new employees to keep up with all of the demand. Eight on your side, we spoke with a USF professor who knows all about the supply chain. He says he expects people will start calming down and relaxing a little bit, and shelves will start to fill back up between mid-April and early May. Many local college seniors have been forced to change or even cancel graduation plans because of this coronavirus pandemic. I want you to meet somebody, Miranda Migrant. She's a senior at the University of South Florida, and she told me early on there were several activities that she was involved in through her sorority, and it was all about celebrating her last year of college. It was a fun time for all of them. But the pandemic has closed. It's even canceled everything for her, her classmates, and her friends. So now, her family is still planning to come visit her for graduation, but only as long as it's safe for them to celebrate together. I was definitely very upset at first, but I guess seeing that people are actually really being affected by this and, you know, dying from this disease, um, I guess it's for the better. Now, Miranda tells me right now she and some other students are just trying to be flexible with their graduation plans and keep hoping for the best. We'll see how it plays out. Time now is 438 and something good this morning, helping shelter pets find forever homes, even though many people are self-isolating at home. The Hillsborough County Pet Resource Center has launched a curbside cuddles program. It allows families to choose a fur baby online and then just pick it up at the curb. The Pet Resource Center says this lowers a person's risk of exposure. Now, to read more about the curbside cuddles program, check out this story on our WFLA app.